Hello, I'm David Hackham from the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh of UPMC. And I'd like to discuss with you our findings based on our recent article entitled Toll-like Receptor 4 Inhibits Enterocyte Proliferation Via Impaired Beta-Catenin Signaling in Necrotizing Enterocolitis. By way of background, necrotizing enterocolitis, or NEC, is the most common lethal disease affecting the GI tract of the premature infant. And shown here are the intestines of a little baby that developed necrotizing enterocolitis. The overriding hypothesis of the current study is that toll-like receptor 4, the innate immune receptor, impairs enterocyte proliferation in NEC via impaired beta-catenin signaling. A few years ago, my lab demonstrated that TLF4 mutant mice are protected from the development of NEC, confirming indeed that TLF4 activation plays a critical role in the development of this disease. Subsequently, we demonstrated that TLF4 acts within the enterocyte as a switch, which when turned on, leads to NEC development. And this occurs through two pathways. First, TLF4 activation leads to mucosal injury. In addition, TLF4 activation blocks mucosal repair, and it does so by inhibiting both migration of enterocytes and their proliferation. The purpose of this study was to hone in on how TLF4 activation limits proliferation. And shown here is that indeed TLF4 activation leads to an inhibition of proliferation shown in this in vitro study. TLF4 activation was required for this effect, as when we knocked down TLF4 using a specific siRNA, TLF4 activation was no longer shown to lead to this effect. This effect was seen not only in vitro, but also in vivo as in TLF4 wild-type mice, LPS led to a loss of cell division, as shown in this PCNA stain, which was not seen in TLF4 mutant mice, shown in the right two panels. Surprisingly, this effect was specific for newborn mice, as LPS did not block proliferation in adult mice, nor in the colon. We next asked the question, could TLF4 activation inhibit enterocyte proliferation via effects on beta-catenin signaling? Indeed, this appears to be the case, as when we knock down beta-catenin using a specific siRNA, LPS activation of TLF4 no longer led to an inhibition of cell division. Further details on how TLF4 activation lead to inhibition of proliferation through beta-catenin are shown in the accompanying article, but suffice it to say that GSK3-beta, the inhibitory molecules that regulate beta-catenin signaling, were activated by TLF4 as summarized in this schematic and provided in further detail in the accompanying article. These effects on beta-catenin and GSK3-beta of TLF4 activation appear to be true in the disease necrotizing enterocolitis, as is shown in this slide, in which the staining of beta-catenin was reduced in NEC, whereas the inhibitory molecule GSK3-beta were elevated. This effect was specific for TLF4, as TLF4 inhibition in mutant mice no longer showed that effect. And indeed, in patients that developed NEC, beta-catenin expression was decreased, whereas GSK3-beta, the inhibitory pathway, were increased. Finally, we sought to investigate whether inhibition of TLF4 signaling in the intestine could reverse these effects. When we administered mice a mutant TLF4, we were able to restore proliferation, restore beta-catenin activation, and reduce GSK3-beta. The inhibition of TLF4 signaling in the gut is summarized in this slide here, in which we demonstrate that the signaling is specific for the small intestine. In summary, as can be seen, we've now shown that TLF4 activation leads to NEC through the regulation of both injury, as it was shown in the past, and now through healing, through effects on proliferation. Please see the accompanying article for further details in which we now report this novel pathway linking TLF4 with inhibition of beta-catenin signaling via GSK3 activation, leading to reduced proliferation both in vitro and in vivo. These data provide additional insights into the pathogenesis of diseases of intestinal inflammation, such as NEC. I'd like to thank you very much for your attention in looking at this video abstract. And again, I'd like to refer you to the accompanying article for further details that clarify many of the points that I discussed. Thanks very much.